On February 22nd, I made this promise to you guys. <laughs> Sub incentives. 100 subscribers is coming up. It's gonna happen like within the next month or two. So to celebrate that, I'm going to ride to my grandparents' house. I planned on doing that last Thanksgiving, which uh, obviously didn't happen. And then two months later, I hit 100 subscribers. But then it took me three months to make the video. Regardless, here it is. I am finally doing the ride to my grandparents' house. Now I know what you're thinking. That is the worst wind noise you've ever heard. But trust me, it gets better. I feel the extra weight on my bike from all the water. I have about three liters of water on me. I'm gonna have to put my camera away. I was training up for this, but then I never ended up doing it. And now, right now, like I haven't ridden a bike in like a month aside from once a few days ago to make sure my bike was okay. I think the key to this journey today is to just take it slow. I'm going through a number of towns today. Crawfordsville, Mace, New Ross, Liston, Pittsburgh. Oh, I forgot Jamestown. Maybe Brownsburg, Indianapolis, Greenwood, uh, then Bargersville, Trafalgar, Pioga, and then I'll be there. So. It's a long, long journey. My legs right now are already a little bit tired, which is slightly concerning. I think I'm gonna eat a granola bar. The longest ride I've ever done was around 100 miles, and I did it with a friend, but towards the end of the ride, we turned back a bit to try and get closer to Crawfordsville. Though today's ride is a bit shorter, it'll end up being the furthest absolute distance I've ever traveled on a bike, by far. Okay, so, I'm about seven miles in, and I've reached my first town. When I did my 100 mile ride last year with my friend, we both crashed extremely hard at the end because neither of us had anything to eat that day. And we were just drinking Gatorade the whole time that we were buying at gas stations. We were both in ketosis sickness and it was awful. I'm hoping to never do that to myself again. And that's part of the reason why I brought a bunch of sandwiches with me. So I'm in New Ross now. It's gotten a little bit brighter. I'm gonna see if there's a nice place to stop and then hopefully I can have a snack or check my phone. I'm not feeling particularly tired. In fact, I'm feeling better now than I did 20 minutes ago. I'm over a tenth of the way there, I know that. I'm just now leaving New Ross, a very small town, and there weren't really any like clear places to stop, so I'm just gonna eat on the road as I move. The only reason I chose to do this ride on this specific day was because my family was headed down there the next day, so I'd have an easy way back home. The weather ended up being perfect. It was relatively cool for a summer's day, and the wind was generally headed south. At this point, everything was going incredibly well. Yeah, it looks like I'm in Jamestown now. My legs are feeling pretty good. I mean, they feel used, but not abused. <laughs> City slime. Every little town has a, a water tower that you can see basically from the previous town. So you have a clear landmark as to where you need to go and the general direction you need to head toward. I guess I'm about 20% of the way done. I'm just about 18 miles in. Uh, she was like a lot, but I'm not even halfway to India yet, so. <laughs> So, I couldn't remember if Jamestown or Pittsburgh had this little park, but it's Jamestown, so I decided to stop here. It's just this nice little place that has a pavilion with some picnic tables. I'm gonna go ahead and eat my sandwich now. I'm two ninths of the way through. I don't even, oh, it's 22%, that's right. <laughs> it's gonna be weird talking to myself. It smells good. That's good. When thinking about my route, I decided to subdivide it into seven sections. 
County Highway, Suburban Bike Path, Urban Streets, Urban Bike Path, Suburban Streets, County Roads, and Forested Roads. This made my progress a lot easier to think about. Right now, I'm right in the middle of the first section. There's a bathroom here. I don't really have to go, but if it's available, it's unlocked. I'll also take this as an opportunity to kind of show my setup. It's pretty simple. I have this bar bag, and I have this saddle bag, and then I have, I mentioned these before, but these custom <laughs> denim uh, sandwich bags, which just conveniently fit there. I rate this place a 10 out of 10. No reason not to. <laughs> And that's how you do that. <laughs> so that's pretty accurate, but I'm entering the city in a different way, so that's reassuring, I guess. I'm about to end this first leg of the journey. Uh, so I'll be moving on to that rail trail within the next 30 minutes. I'm entering Lizton. I guess Pittsburgh is in like eight more miles or something, we'll see. There's a little bit of riding I have to do before getting on the trail. The traffic picked up, but that's all right because I'm about to leave the highway. I am now moving toward that rail trail. Um, this is where navigation gets a little more difficult. I've been on the same road for the past maybe two hours. It's a nice day. Look at that. Clear skies. Open fields. No traffic on the side road, that's nice. I'm on a really nice, gentle, downward slope so I can take a nice break and uh, just kind of chill. <laughs> I think the uh, the trail should be coming up around here. I'm not exactly sure. I just hope I'm in the right area. <laughs> I don't know. There it is. B&O Trail. So I just took a small break at this bench. I feel good. My butt isn't hurting as much as it was. <laughs> Somehow all of my, like my sandwiches and all of my water has managed to stay like pretty cold, <laughs> which is interesting because it's, it's like the hottest part of the summer. I'm not gonna lie, it's actually like kind of cold in the shade. Riding on a bike trail felt amazing after riding on a highway for so long. Having a change in scenery helped make things much less boring. Hopefully that's cool. I've been going for about just over two and a half hours and I'm just under 35 miles, which is pretty good. I'm probably pushing it a little bit more than I need to. Riding on these trails is so much different. Like after riding for like 30 miles on the road and then just like having this sort of scenery and then like everyone you pass just smiles and waves. <laughs> Tunnel. I need to find a place to stop so I can check the route because this trail doesn't last forever and I need to know where I am. So I left the the trail. I have people behind me. And now I'm just on city roads and this is the most annoying part of the journey, I think. Up until I'm leaving Indianapolis and actually leaving Greenwood as well. And I'm gonna try to keep this to a minimum, filming that is, because this is kind of a dangerous spot to do that sort of thing. about to cross a very big interstate, 465. And then right after I'll be turning off this road, so that's very good. I need to hold the camera with my left hand because I'm gonna need to shift gears. I am about to enter <laughs> the most urban area of the trip. Right after I'm done with this section of the trail, this'll uh, turn to pavement 
and the B&O trail will begin again. Then I'll be in Indianapolis and I'll start heading south. Going through Greenwood's gonna be obnoxious, I can already tell. I'm now just on a grass path. I am at the very beginning, or I guess the end, I don't know, of another part of the B&O trail. I have been riding for three hours and 10 minutes and I've traveled 42 miles. My average speed being 13 miles an hour, which is pretty good for not having been uh, practicing. <laughs> yeah, so if I've gone 41 miles, that means I'm about halfway, which means maybe three and a half more hours, which puts me at an arrival time of three o'clock or somewhere around there. It's very soggy, which I guess kind of makes sense because it was in the bottom of the bag. It's, uh, I don't know, I'm looking forward to getting onto the White River Trail because that's going to be pretty cool. <laughs> After that, like, Greenwood's going to be the worst part of this whole journey, I'm pretty sure. We'll see, though. Maybe I'm wrong. It was nice to have a little break. I probably could have had a longer break, but I kind of want to get there as soon as I can. I'm kind of over it already. <laughs> Not going to lie. The roads are terrible and there's tons of traffic. It's just bad. That is downtown Indianapolis. That means I'm almost out of this area. Right here, it's not so bad. Now that it's opened up to two lanes per direction, it feels a little better. I'm on the White River Trail now. Probably gonna be the best part of the ride, <laughs> other than ending it. So I've kind of reached the climax of the ride. I'm on the White River right now in downtown Indy. It's all going to be downhill from here, except if you look at the elevation graph, it's actually all uphill from here. So I just won't think about that. <laughs> That's Bluff Road. I'm going to be on this road for a while. And this is why I'm saying bluff is so annoying for this whole area. Because I'm using bluff to go through Greenwood. And this is what it's going to be like the entire time. Do you see how much room I just got there? Almost nothing. So yeah, and then there's also like nowhere to stop. It'll be like this for like 10, 15 miles, I think. I thought I was making good progress and I guess I am. But I just checked my stats. And I still have 40 more miles. Boy, I'm over this. <laughs> oh man. I'm just here trying to dodge these rocks. Trying not to get hit on my other side. I just can't wait until I'm out of suburbia. I was looking the other way and then I turn and I see this little park. And now I'm gonna rest for a while because the key to longevity is going to be resting, at least in this project. I've gone 52 miles. I feel all right. But just the thought of having to go 40 more miles is like too much almost. <laughs> Perfect. As I pour this water, notice how the clear bottle doesn't fill up all the way. I was under the impression that these two different types of water bottles had a similar capacity. This leads to some major problems later in the ride. I always want to like get things done as fast as I can, but like right now, I just need to lay down, bro. I like feel okay, but my uh, legs, they just need to recover. Just my thighs, and they're not like an agonizing pain, but I feel like if I push it too hard, I could get to a point where it's almost unbearable. I'm just excited to get out of the city, but after that, I still have an entire county to ride through before I'm at my destination. So I got to the top of the hill on Bluff that intersects with Stop 11 Road, and 
it felt so good to just get like in a really tucked position and just coast for like a half mile after that but i missed my turn because of it so i'm having to back trap like a like a fool about a quarter mile onto morgantown road is where i was supposed to go and now i'm wasting energy and i'm going uphill so that's extra annoying i am out of indianapolis and i'm in greenwood and this road morgantown road will take me i'm pretty sure like halfway through uh johnson county so i'll be on this for probably 15 miles now my bike's making a noise i just realized <laughs> i might have to stop to check that out but other than that i don't want to stop for anything except to eat and to rest my legs because I mean, you, you have to take trade-offs. Like, I want to stop because I'm tired, but I also want to get to my destination. I'm gonna go see if I can find a chair. Maybe a water refill, and I don't have to be as conservative with my water. I've found that baseball diamonds and football fields tend to just have an open pump. Oh, there's a water fountain. Oh, and look at these chairs, please, please, please. I was worried about that. Dang. It's a uh, 110 right now. <laughs> it's ripping the bag because of how moist it is now. It's still cold. If this doesn't deserve a subscribe and a like, I don't know what does. This is pretty good. This would probably deserve that. <laughs> My quads, they're just very sore. My neck also is kind of sore from having to like hold it up when I'm like hunched over but I can't really do much about that. I tried like stretching it and stuff before and it didn't really work, so I'm gonna try rubbing my water bottle like this. That's intense. Now that is the one thing that training, like before a long trip like this actually like does. Like endurance wise, like up here, I feel fine. If I were racing, it might be different, but since I'm averaging like between 16 and 12 miles an hour, that's really not a problem. But just my leg strength, I don't even know what mile I'm on. I'd guess probably around 65. You know, it's difficult and it hurts. <laughs> Weirdly enough, my legs being sore after this point just wasn't a problem. I'm still at Morgantown Road, but I just realized this. <laughs> my legs just aren't as sore as they were. I guess that uh, the thing I did with the bottle actually helped a lot. <laughs> oh. I need more water, like now. I feel like vomiting. I'm gonna be honest, guys. <laughs> this feels so dumb. I need water. Hold off the road for a bit. Normally I'd just stay on the road. My legs feel fine now. I just feel like I need water. I only have like two thirds of a container left. And so I'm trying to like not drink it. I'm stopping here. I'm just gonna lay down for like 10 minutes. I don't even care. I just have to. I could have gotten water earlier in the trip, but I didn't realize I needed to. And after I realized how little water I had, there just wasn't anywhere to stop. I'm at mile 67, and it's been five and a half hours. I'm gonna try to go into whatever gas station I can. I don't even feel exhausted. I just feel it's just dehydration, you know what I mean? Now this is much more my speed. Just look at this, this is beautiful. Nice and simple. You can see for miles. I can't believe this, but I went around Bargersville and I forgot I was going to do that. So there won't be a gas station. And I'm also going around Trafalgar because to get into Trafalgar, I have to use a pretty busy highway, which means there will not be any gas stations unless if there's one in the middle of nowhere, which I guess there's a chance. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Water. There's absolutely no one out here. I just... If I go slow enough, there's a chance. I could probably make it to my destination without refilling water, but I'm gonna feel awful. And with no good place of doing it, I think that's kind of what I have to do. I should have filled up before. I just checked and I have 20 more miles of riding and like almost no water. <laughs> Man, this is just bad. I can't, 20 more miles? Bro, I doubt you'll be able to see it, but right on the horizon, it's almost out of view. You can see Trafalgar's water tower. 
I mean, I need water, but if I were to head over there, then I'd be going out of my way. So I just don't know. I don't know what to do. This kind of view is what keeps me going. Oh my gosh, I don't want to record any more of these. I have no idea what water tower that is. Or the, what? That says Trafalgar on it. No, I thought I was closer than I was. Oh, please. Ugh. Wait, 375 South? Are you kidding? What was I thinking? I'm nowhere, I need to take another break. I feel like all the videos I'm taking are just me of, I can't talk. I feel like all the, are just of me taking breaks. Mainly because when I'm on the bike, I just have to focus on moving because it's so miserable. Yeah, I found a place with shade this time. So the next town I'm entering is Pioga and I'm pretty sure I remember there being vending machines there at this one like tiny convenience store. It's a tiny little town. Man, I need water. Getting back up after laying down is the worst thing ever. Just the initial little starts bad. <laughs> I'm almost to Pioga. If those vending machines either aren't there, out of order, or just empty, I'm gonna be so mad. It's the only thing keeping me going. Please. Are you kidding me? It's, it's I always just remembered it being there. I never got a good look at it. Funny enough, the store I was remembering was actually just a hundred yards down the road, just barely out of sight. I'm so thirsty. I'm almost done though. I think I have five miles. But five miles, it's so long. With the water I've had left, I've been running on about a cup and a half for the last hour or two. <laughs> I've been doing about a tablespoon of water every mile or three quarter mile. It's been awful. I am in the neighborhood. I am so done. Like, I feel like I'm gonna be expected to socialize with my relatives when I'm there, but. I just want to have some like lemonade or water and fall asleep. Oh my gosh, this is so annoying. My legs don't even hurt. My butt doesn't even hurt. I don't even have that bad of a headache. I can just feel the dehydration in my gut. It's just bad. I'm not going to film me arriving because I'm just going to collapse on the ground. Oh my gosh. Just have like a mile left. Guys, I'm here. I'll probably close off with something else, but I think this is my last clip. Goodbye. After planning this trip nine months ago, I'm very happy to have finally completed it. The ride took me nine hours and 40 minutes to complete, including breaks. In February, I also talked about other subscription milestone projects. As of right now, for a thousand subscribers, I'll be boating down the Wabash River and then biking home with my bike boat trailer. If you want to see something else, feel free to talk about it in the comment section below. I can't wait to see you then. This is update me. <laughs> I am just just chilling down by the lake and I've had some fluids to drink and I already feel just so much better. If there was any doubt, then it was it was definitely the dehydration. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching.